Players don't go to voluntary minicamp for a lot of reasons. The veterans often won't go as the rookies are just learning to crawl and how an NFL offense and defense works, learning the basics of where to line up in formations, or even as simple as where to stand in the huddle. A lot of people prefer to stay at home, work out with their personal trainers, and be ready for mandatory minicamp. But most everyone now with the new rules does not miss mandatory, as there are pretty hefty fines for not showing up and possible contract problems for holding out. But regardless of all of these consequences, this is what's going on with Terry McLaurin in Washington right now. This is a huge statement that he's not happy with his current contract situation. The commander's star receiver is projected to make under $3 million this upcoming season, and he's looking around the league to see all of his peers getting bagged up, making $25 to $30 million annually on a multi-year deal with insane guarantees. Not only does it feel like he needs to be in that range because he's just as talented as these guys, but he feels like he's in a situation where his team needs him more than he needs them. As we saw with Christian Kirk in Jacksonville, it becomes very expensive when you need a player on your team, but you don't have the appeal of a top quarterback or a really promising shot at a ring. I am very confused why this hasn't been done already. I don't think the commanders are in any sort of rebuild mode. They just brought in Carson Wentz, picked up his entire contract off the Colts books, which isn't a move you'd make if you were in a rebuild. And if they're looking to win now and be competitive, they need Scary Terry. And in today's video, we're gonna look at a few things. Firstly, why they need to pay him. Not only because of his talent level, but we're gonna see what production he's been able to bring without ever having a starting level quarterback. We'll be able to see some film and see why he's not only a top 15 receiver, but why that might even be way too low. We'll start to see how many yards were left on the field, how he's being underutilized, and he's even better than people people think. And if you're watching this video and the contract extensions already happened, this video is still for you as you can see why they needed to pay him and you'll probably find a newfound appreciation for his game. As I'm recording this right now after I've been through all the film, I can tell you I sure did. Well, there's a lot to talk about so let's get right into it. First, let's compare him to another receiver so we can start to grasp what he really means to his team. So Jamar Chase was fourth in the receiving yards in the NFL with 1,455. Terry McLaurin was all the way down the list at 20 with 1,053. This is a wide margin. Since they both played 17 games, this is about four and a half really good games separating them. But when we compare their receiving yards to how many yards their team had totally through the air, the percentage of what they did for their offense is almost identical, even with Jamar having over 400 more yards. This is because the Bengals were just shy of having three 1,000 yard receivers, where Terry McLaurin, this is crazy, he was the only receiver to break 100 yards in a single game all season. He had over 1,000 yards receiving, and the next closest person to him was under 400. 400 yards and that was JD McKissick who happens to be their running back. He was sometimes the only player that the quarterback could get the ball to. But now that we can start to conceptualize with numbers how important he is to their team, let's look at some films to show you what it really looks like. And part of the reason he puts up the numbers he does is just how great of a receiver he is in general. He has good size at 6 foot, 210 pounds, amazing speed running a 4-3-5-40, great releases and great routes to the top, and really good hands and body control. And as we can see how fast, whether it's in man or zone coverages, we have a zone coverage here, James Bradbury over the top of him, how fast he eats up ground with his speed. He's taking full strides right after him, trying to close the gap as much as he can, and this is what he does that separates him from other receivers. When receivers want to throw off a DB, especially in zone coverage, they're going to give these choppy steps to try and throw them off, but also give them an advantage in getting to slow down to make their break. Not Terry McLaurin. He takes his 4-3-5 speed, full stride, full stride, and this is where James Bradbury starts to commit to the middle because he's closed the gap on him. He has to respect his speed over the top. Terry McLaurin is still taking full strides, and then as soon as he plants his left foot, he snaps it off, gets to the sidelines, and then this is where we start to see our first problem. The ball's late. James Bradbury starts to make a play on the ball. This isn't the worst play in the world. We would like to see this ball come in a lot earlier, have some anticipation coming off his break, and so not only is he a super talented receiver and he puts up these numbers, we're going to start to see where it could have been a lot more. 
and everything just seemed to be way harder than it need to. When you see these other receivers have walk-in touchdowns when they burn their guy having 4-3 speed, that was rarely the case with Terry McLaurin. This is Garrett Gilbert, one of the 10 quarterbacks Terry McLaurin has had so far, completely burns Darius Slay on this play, has to come all the way back around and make a contested catch. But luckily for the commanders, he has one of the highest contested catch rates out of any receiver in the league, and he had to do it way more than he needed to. And this was fortunate because not only were his quarterbacks inaccurate, which made contested catches, but he was thrown into it being contested catches when he was underthrown. And so everything Terry McLaurin did with the Commanders last year was absolutely earned. It is some of the grittiest 1,000 yards. When this should be a stand-up walk-in touchdown, it's going to be another contested catch where he has to go up and moss the corner. Or if we look to the bottom of your screen, he's going to be able to stack the corner. And if this is a well-thrown ball right here, he would be able to be off to the races. But he has to slow down, make this back shoulder contested catch, comes down with it, gets both feet in bounds. So this is where we start to see he is wildly talented. But if he was in a much better situation, he would be able to thrive very similarly to someone like Jamar Chase does. And if the commanders are using an argument that he doesn't have the numbers other receivers do, we just have to look at plays like this where this should be a completely easy touchdown. This is where we really start to see yards being left on the field because this ends up being a touchdown, but he makes it way harder than he needs to because right now there's no safety over the top. Taylor Heineke has really good anticipation on this. Bad accuracy. This ball needs to be floated over here. It's going to be right here. And if this is in the open field, he can take this and run the distance, but it's high, it's behind him. He gives the corner a chance to put one hand on it and potentially break it up. Terry McLaurin, very good receiver, doesn't let that happen. But you're hoping Carson Wentz is going to have a lot more accuracy when he comes to the commanders. But Terry McLaurin is saying, my talent level is top five, top seven in the entire league. You can't look at my numbers because you have to see what I've been dealing with. And the quarterback really limits what they're able to do on offense as well. We're going to have a very normal concept. We're going to have a whip route right here, tight end on a deep over. And this is Terry McLaurin. And what they're going to say is we're going to do a play action levels where you attack. This is very common with one high safety attack three different levels on one side of the field and put this corner, this linebacker and this safety in a really tough spot. But this is going to be a shot play. Terry McLaurin's going to fake this corner, but then come all the way across. But Taylor Heineke doesn't have the arm to make this and when probably 15 other quarterbacks in the league would be able to make this throw Taylor Heineke just doesn't have the arm talent this is another 50 yards in one play that he's just not able to have because he's limited by quarterbacks and this play really shows it all because it's not all Taylor Heineke. He does have to take some credit and so do the other 10 people that have thrown the ball so far. But if the offensive line doesn't hold up, it really doesn't matter what you do. We have Terry McLaurin at the bottom of your screen, but the first time around we watch this play in slow motion, we're going to watch the right tackle, how he immediately gets obliterated off the line and Taylor Heineke is going to have to deal with pressure right away. Now let's look to the bottom of your screen and see what Terry McLaurin does. This is the level of talent he's at. He snaps off the corner he falls he is wide open he's gonna put his hand up and mailbox it but if we see Taylor Heineke he's a little preoccupied trying to avoid a rush and he's just gonna throw it up which is a horrible decision it's a one possession game still a lot of time left in the game but this angle shows better of what exactly he was throwing into Terry McLaurin was wide open on this play and not only does the offensive line not hold up but we see that Taylor Heineke makes a doubly bad decision just by throwing it up Terry McLaurin puts it together gets them the touchdown and that's kind of been the story of his first three years in the NFL so he has the speed, he has the route running, he's really one of the most complete receivers in the NFL in my opinion. He has earned every single yard that he's gotten so far. He hasn't had the luxury of a top 5 quarterback or having another 1,000, 1,500 yard receiver on him on the team that takes some of the tension away. But he still goes out there every week and pulls off the incredible that just makes your jaw drop and makes you think why would Washington not pay this man. And this is not a knock on Jamar Chase at all, but when I see the top list in the NFL receivers, I see Jamar and Terry McLaurin pretty sped out, Jamar being in the top five a lot of times, Terry McLaurin throwing around 15. But to me, these guys are nearly identical in what they can bring to the team. They are both guys who run four threes, are insane at making contested catches, especially for their size. They both have amazing release packages to snap off corners and man, are smart enough to manipulate defenders with their routes to really find themselves open open and zone coverages. They both have great bursts and field vision which allows them to eat yards quickly and be deadly with yards after the catch. 
The only difference is Jamar Chase woke up on third base in the NFL. He has a stud at quarterback in Joe Burrow, who he already has amazing chemistry with. He has really good talent all around him in the receiving room, and he's in a pass-heavy offense. An absolute dream place for a receiver to get drafted in the league and have instant success if you're already very talented. And I think Terry is at a crossroads with Washington because he wants to get paid the top of the league, but he also knows it would be much easier somewhere else but this is absolutely why if I'm Washington I am paying him anything he wants to stay his value on this team is irreplaceable with what they currently have and if they want their expensive new quarterback to have any shot at success they want to give him some help and this will probably be the best receiver Carson Wentz has ever played with because I think Terry McLaurin in the grand scope of things talent wise is up there with the top six seven receivers in the league he wasn't as lucky as some people like MBS who gets to go from Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams to Patrick Mahomes and Travis Travis Kelsey, but he's done the absolute most with this situation. He earns everything he has up until this point, and less than $3 million is just not compensation this year that he deserves. He's a captain of the team, he's proven to stay healthy, and when he's out on the field, he dominates week in and week out. Washington needs to pay this man. But it was really cool to take a deep dive and really appreciate how great of a player he really is and what makes him so special. But I have to mention right now as I'm posting this video, I saw that Terry McLaurin was liking tweets about Reggie Wayne being the new wide receiver coach for the Colts. Terry McLaurin is from Indianapolis. I heard there's been some rumors. It would make a lot of sense if he went to Indy if Washington doesn't want to give him the money he deserves. Indy could definitely make that happen. That would be really cool if Washington is dumb enough not to sign him. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you guys think. Make sure to like this video if you like videos like these. Make sure to comment down below what you think. And make sure to subscribe if you enjoy daily sports content. Thank you guys so much for checking out the channel. And as always, I will see you all tomorrow. Peace!